But I want to start off you know, talking about the investor piece, um, you know, and specifically, uh, one of the things that we want to talk about today are, are interest rates related to uh, buying an investment property, down payment numbers, as well as managing the rental property. And Paul, I'll start with you because I think that that's one of the things a lot of consumers attempt to go at it on their own. They, they say, you know what, I'm going to manage the property myself, I'm going to put it up for rent, I'm going to put it on Craigslist. And, and they run into, a, I think, especially a first-time landlord runs into more obstacles than they expect. They do, and uh, one of the major reasons they do that is uh, we find more often than not they don't properly screen the tenant. Uh, and that's the, that's the first key, is you have to know that person's credit, that background, their landlord history, uh, their tenancy history, because almost every case when I've had a, a, a landlord that has managed the property themselves, They've either leased it to a friend, or they found someone on Craigslist, or they, they didn't properly screen them, and then they left holding holding a big big uh, big problem. And once you start having a problem like that, getting them out is if you don't know how to do it or who to help with that, then they they get a destroyed property, and it takes them forever to get them out. I think the other obstacle that you run into too, and, and I can speak this from personal experience. You know, I'm in the real estate business; we own rental property. And you know, we had a rental that we had, uh, a condo that we had on the market up off of Hillsboro Avenue, and we had it rented to somebody for a while. And then, you know, we really didn't pay attention. You know, we're we're not in the we're not in your business. Right. You, know, you manage rental properties. We help people buy and sell homes, and so we, we didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the rental market. And come to find out, we were under renting the place. We were right. we were below market rent. We hired you. You get us a better number. And sometimes people, you know, because they don't have the other obstacle that you run into is you don't have the time to show it. You don't have the time to be there. So you end up accepting a lower number just right. because of the convenience factor that a, a better property manager is going to get you a better number because they can be there for every showing. They can better market it. They can, you know, more exposure because right. I know in the sales business, a missed showing is a missed opportunity and could, could lead to a lower price sale. Absolutely. And that's, that's another key uh, item, too, is we have a designated leasing agent. That's all she does. Uh, Alex Roman, she shows all the properties. She makes all the appointments. And... Uh, and she'll set some up almost like a miniature uh, open house where she's not wasting her time, and it also gives a little sense of urgency. If somebody's there at the home and they see other people looking at it too, they think, well, I better pull the trigger on this. Oh, that, that's a tactic we use pretty regularly, although I wish you wouldn't have said that because now all my competitors are going to come copying it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, we, we do that a lot. We'll have a, we'll schedule showings. Our showing service will schedule showings and toggle them close to each other so that the buyers might actually run into each other. There's, if they see someone else leaving the home mm -hmm. or showing up when they're leaving, it makes them feel like the property is more of a hot commodity. It's definitely a real estate sales tactic that's been Absolutely. used. You know, and, and something that we use in our repertoire to, to help help that seller right. get better, you know, better marketability and, and more, you know, I, I call it more perception of demand. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so we, we do that a lot as well. But well, Arnie, I want to get to you. So we t we talked to Paul about the the management piece and and kind of why it's important to hire a property manager. And a lot of landlords and investors, you know, they're using cash, um, and and certainly that can be viable. But why? Um, why would they use cash when they can get the money at, at rates that we have today? So I want to talk to you about what do rates look like and what do down payment scenarios look like for somebody that's thinking about buying an investment or rental property? Well, right now the rates on a uh, investment property, they run about uh, half a percent higher than an owner occupied Which is property. a lot lower than people think. Yes. You know, we've had people think, oh, I'm going to get like 6 or 7% because it's going to be a rental property. It's like, no, 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 no. Uh -uh, no. Yeah. We're not in 2007. It's not going to be that high. Yeah, it's only a half a percent difference. And, you know, when I talk about rates or when any lender talks about rates, it's so many variables involved. I mean, you got to look at how much money you're putting down. you got to look at um, your credit score. So, you know, just to throw out a random rate. Is, yeah, it's, it, it's impossible to do that because yeah. you've, got, you've got every person's situation is going to be different. But what I can say, though, is that it's not as much higher than normal no. residential no, rates. it's a half a percent. It's, uh, so it, it just, uh, just to give you an example, you know, um, to put 20% down is about a quarter percent higher in rate than to put 25% down. So... You know, I mean, so again, you're still like between half a percent to three quarters of a percent. And that's where an investor has to look at it and say, what's more important to them, paying down the debt or better return and keeping more capital? So that that's where they have to decide, is it worth it to put up the extra capital? A lot of times it's not. Yeah, you know, at Waterstone Mortgage, we, we, we teach our loan officers to give options, you know, because everybody's different. Everybody has a different goal. You got to understand what your goal is. 
And so you lay out the options here, which is what it is with 20% down. Here's what it is with 25% down. But um, one thing that to keep in mind, too, is that I think as an investor, keeping cash or, or keeping capital for repairs is important. And I don't I think people understand um, the value of not, maybe not negotiating so much in price, but maybe negotiating for closing costs. So concessions. So you keep some of that capital on hand, and so so if the roof goes bad, or, or this, or that. Exactly, and that money is just goes against your bottom line on your tax return. I mean, that, you know, you can't really recoup that. I mean, obviously, it's a, a loss that you can recoup for tax services. Sure. But but for example, let's let's just say that you. you I'm just giving you a price here. So at a two hundred thousand dollar loan, at four and a quarter, the payment on that is. Um, 985. Okay. Now, 984, excuse me. If you raise the price $2,000 to cover, because th- an investor still are going to pay 2%. Right. Which is different than owner occupy, which is a That's higher. interesting. So, yeah. an investor, you can only get a 2% credit towards concessions. You can only get 2% credit towards concessions as an investor. Okay. okay. And where it's higher if you're uh, okay, on owner occupant. Okay. okay. Three right. to six percent, depending on sure. how much you put down. But so, if you get the 2%, so now, you're pay- now your sales price is 202. But the seller's paying two thousand dollars of your closing cost. That's two percent. I'm sorry, that's one percent. I'm sorry, that's one yeah. percent. So let's say two hundred four. Okay. Now that only increases your payment eighteen bucks. Yeah. Which is what's more important, having that four grand kind of set aside for repairs and you know anything that can happen, right. or eighteen bucks a month. Right. Eighteen bucks a month. And to take it even further, if you raise the um, the rate another quarter percent, you can have the lender pay another percent. Okay. And so now you're talking about, you know, you can, you can use that, and that's $30. So that's $30 difference in payment. So a quarter percent rise in rate is about $30 a month, where a, 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 a 2% rise in your value of your house, $2,000, in other words, or $4,000, in other words, is only $18 a month. So at the end of the day, just so you know, it's always better to um, have uh, more in the, in the loan Right. That it is in the rate. Because you got some yeah. protection there in case something goes wrong. You have a little more capital if you got to more replace a roof yes. or an AC or whatever. And that's something that, that I think a lot of times people don't translate to. They don't realize that, the, especially with money being as cheap as it is, it's you know if you can get it at a lower down payment, why not? And certainly there are people out there that would rather just focus on paying it down. You know, every person's situation, like you said, is going to be a little bit different. Now here's, so, the, here's, the, here's the other thing that you're talking about investors here. So I just looked up the Dow Jones average. You know what the Dow Jones average return was this in 2014? No. It was over 8%. Right. Okay. Now, if I'm giving you a rate at four and a quarter, why would you take your money out of your stock market at eight and a quarter? To get, to, 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 to pay off four and a quarter. To pay off four and a quarter. Right. Yeah, why would Doesn't you do make that? sense. Doesn't make sense. You know, and, and unfortunately, that, that like we talked about, we've seen this, you know, huge surplus of cash coming and buying. Some of that's hedge fund and private money, and I get that, but the, the you know, Joe Blow that's out there that's got a couple hundred thousand dollars and wants to buy a rental property or two, Buying it cash, sometimes it may not be the right option. You know, you can get a loan to such a loan. You can use that money to make more money. And, and again, we're not telling you to go out and do anything, you know, overly aggressive or risky or. or right. You've got to analyze like the that. numbers and make sure yeah. the numbers work for you. And you know, that may mean you put 50% down. But right. to go 100% cash right. doesn't make a lot of sense right now with the way that numbers are working. Right. Yeah. You, you, can, you can use that money to make more income versus just having it sit in a property that's earning basically only four and a quarter. Exactly. Um, so down payment, typically on, a, on an investment property, you are looking generally at what kind of percentage down payment that people 20% are going to is the minimum, roughly. Okay. okay. You may find a 10% deal out there, but I, I, in fact, there used to be 10% deals out there that are gone, from what I know. But, and, and also, the problem with that is you're paying mortgage insurance. You're paying mortgage so you start insurance. to lose the return of where it doesn't make as much sense. Exactly. You know, to, to, you know from yeah. a number standpoint. Well, Paul, so looking at some of the numbers, um, what are, you know, and I think I probably know some of them too, but we're some of the best neighborhoods in Tampa for someone to buy a rental property where they can get a loan and make a decent return? I mean, I would think places like, you know, West Chase, East Hillsboro. I mean, what are some areas that you think investors are kind of hot on for rental property right now? Right now, a lot of the areas are um, East Hillsboro, Riverview, Apollo Beach, and a lot of that's driven because of the new hospital, the Amazon Center, um, some of the larger uh, employers there, that, um, and also the commutability from those places down to the Air Force Base and, right. and so forth. So those are the hot areas because that's where people are moving to because that's where the employment is. And again, it's really easily uh, easy to commute. 
you know, we look at people will ask about buying rental property in South Tampa, and the problem with that is that the prices have escalated to the point where the rent numbers start to not make sense. Right. Now, if you're buying it to bank on appreciation, that's risky. Um, you know, I, I, I buy rental property for cash flow, and if right. I get appreciation, great, I celebrate, but I'm not counting on it. Right. And, and I think if you look at those areas that you're talking about, you can buy and make a decent cap. You can get a 10% annual return in some of those Absolutely. areas buying single-family homes and beat the stock market mm -hmm. and, and, and also get all the tax benefits and control of the asset right. that you don't get when you buy, buy a stock. And that's one of the benefits of, of investing in real estate is you control the asset. You can improve it. You can you know you get more tax benefits. Um, and and certainly, um, you know, you're, you're, you know, you get two financial benefits, kind of like a, a stock that has a dividend and grows in value. Right. Real estate has a dividend, a.k.a. rent that you get every month. And then secondly, the value gain that you get. Mm -hmm. And those East Hillsboro areas, it's interesting because those are the areas that the hedge funds, when they were hot and heavy, and they're still out there a little bit, but not much. When they were hot and heavy, they went after it. You know what? There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. The rest of the investors should pay attention and follow the trail that they gave you because they knew the numbers worked. Right. They knew that it was a good long-term buy. And, and now that they're not there, there's great investment opportunities still out there. Right. And also, um, and you mentioned this the other day, uh, the uh, IRA control of the asset. Having a home in, as part of your IRA. We're going to talk about manage. that. Yeah, that's one of the that's topics we're going to talk about a little later in the show today is the, you know, the self-directed IRA mm -hmm. where you can buy investment property in your 401k or IRA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's something we'll get to. I got a call from a, a listener this week that asked some questions about that. So we're going to be back after a quick break continuing our conversation on the Dunkin' Duo Real Estate Show about the Tampa Bay real estate market.